me, Mike Self and I. It's me, Mike Self and I. Me, Mike Self and I. It's me, Mike Self and I. Stop, stop it, stop it, stop, stop it, stop it. What the hell is wrong with my damn charger? Here I am, trying to get into sequence, trying to welcome everybody back to me, Mike, Self, and I, and then my damn charger. Goong, goong, loong, 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 loong. First world problems, people. First world problems. Oh, my charger won't charge my phone and I could be addicted to it. What do I do? Meanwhile, some kid in some third world country. Oh, what it does water look like? Can I have some water, please? Please. No, you cannot have water right now because you're listening to me, Mike, Self, and I. Hey! Welcome to me, Mike, Self, and I, starving child in a third world country that no one cares about. No one even wants to know your name, but I care about you because you're listening to me, Mike, Self, and I, Setenta Uno. Setenta Uno. What, what is Setenta Uno? I, I can't breathe. I can't. Who the hell? I put this on silent. My goodness. Anyways. I'm not I'm not editing that out. Okay? That was my fault. I'm here I am trying to talk to a kid from the third world country and my phone is sending me notifications. What what is phone notifications? Anyways, you're listening to episode 71. 71, ladies and gentlemen. 71. We are doing it. 71 episodes. I am very thankful, very happy. To be, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, uh, trying to move. One of these days I'm going to have an awesome studio and it's going to look beautiful and miraculous. And it's going to be, the picture is going to be great and, and, and the studio won't be so cluttered. But in the meantime, you're just going to have to hear my defeats. But that's okay because 71 episodes, you've been by my side and I thank each and every one of you. I really do. It means a lot. Emma Mikers, you mean a lot. No, I wasn't going to ask for anything else. I'm just saying, you mean a lot. (laughs) How was everyone's weekend? Did everyone have a great weekend? I hope your weekend was well. Um, Do me a favor before we continue this episode. I need you to email me at mmipodcast19 at gmail.com. And tell me what your weekend was like. That's all I want to know. You tell me what your weekend was like. Because you listen to this. You listen to this podcast. I've seen the stats. Okay? I've seen who's listening. I'm watching you. I got a huge fan base in now Texas. Thank you, Texas. I truly appreciate it. Thank you for joining me, Mike, Self, and I. Of course, Sacramento and Elk Grove is still number one leaders in my uh, uh, statistics. Statistics. There we go. I did it. Thank you for listening. I have some fans in Uruguay. Gracias. I have uh, one person listening in the UK. Oh, dear. One person? I must say thank you. Thank you for listening. Maybe these might be bots. Maybe the, they're actually real people. But for the people that I that that shows on my on my stats, on I I thank you. 
Thank you for listening. So tell me, since we are in this together, I want to know what your weekend was like this past Memorial Day weekend. Was it fun? Did you have a good time? Whatever. I just want to know. That's it. I don't want to see it on Facebook. I don't want to see it on social media. Let's just email me. Email each other. What was I was trying to say? Email me. <laughs> email each other. And tell me about your weekend. Once again, podcast 19 at gmail.com. Did you hear that? I had a hiccup. And I stuttered. At the exact same time, email email me at MMI podcast 19 at gmail.com. Okay. My weekend was great. I had a wonderful weekend and I'm going to tell you all about it in this wonderful episode called my Memorial Day weekend. I stuttered again. Why am I stuttering for you? Because I'm nervous. Let me, uh, hold on. I should have done this before the show, but whatever. Anyways, my weekend was great, and uh, I am very thankful for my family, my wife and two daughters. Sorry. I'm very thankful because I'm going to tell you why, and this is what's going to happen. Are you ready? Okay. Uh, Friday was, you know, chill. Saturday, um, we were invited to go to my friend who I went to high school with. And we both don't want to go to our high school reunion because we both realize the people that we don't talk to are going to be there. So why go? You know, obviously, you see this awesome relationship that we have. He's a great guy. He has three kids. His wife went to school with my wife. Now, you see that? We went to arch rival schools. I, I'm over it. He's over it, but obviously they're not. But anyways, they went to uh, their school, and we went to ours. And uh, his wife and I worked together at AMC Theaters a long time ago, many moons ago. I'm old. She's not. Anyways, so there's this, you know, friendship, and we've known each other for quite some time. We we know our families. They know our families. And he invited us to go down because, down to his house, because he graduated. He graduated college, and I could not be more proud of him. I've never graduated college, but he decided to do it. And, of course, we're going to go down there. Of course, we're going to support, and, of course, we're going to hang out and have a wonderful time. Even though we had to deal with traffic. And I get it. It's Memorial Day weekend. People are traveling and traffic and, you know, there's accidents and it's it took forever to get there. But we made it. And it seemed and the cool thing about this party was they they had tacos being catered. Okay, there's something about tacos that are being catered at a party. I'm going because God damn Mexican food's good. And I mean that with mi corazón. (laughs) La mexicana, la comida es muy bueno. Muy bueno, muy bueno, muy bueno. What was that, Michael? Just shut up. Get to the story. It was good. The food was delicious. There was a lot of people there. There was a lot. And... My wife and I, we've, 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 this is what brings us closer together. We don't like to be in crowds. You know, I don't like big gatherings of people. I like to perform in front of big gatherings of people. That's fine. But I don't, I, I just don't want to deal with a lot of people. And, you know, that's just me. That's just me and my wife. We're just like that. That's what makes us wonderful together. We like small gatherings. We like to hang out. Um, there was a lot of people there. And, you know, it's hard to have everyone do proper introductions. So I'm, I, I've am i learned to try to introduce me and my family and just be the, hey, how's it going? This is my wife. I, I'm sure people don't want to go around the whole entire house and say hello, 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 because people are in mid conversation. There's always that weird awkwardness. You know that? 
it's not just me. It's everyone. Okay. Whenever you go to a party, whenever you go to a house, when someone walks in to the house, no one welcomes them with open arms. That's not just at my friend's house. That's at everywhere. Everyone looks at this person and goes, who the fuck is this person? Everyone. No one shakes hand. No one introduces. Everyone acts like they're, they're, uh, uh, they're not there until someone breaks the ice first. If someone doesn't break the ice, people will be quiet to that person that just showed up, even though they're sitting next to you eating delicious tacos. People just don't know how to break the ice. And it's 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 something that it's an awkward moment when you it's really awkward. But if you get past that awkwardness and break the ice first and introduce and say hello, I've talked to I, uh, during this big, huge party. I personally talked to a handful of people. I like to go me personally. I like to go around the whole house or just around the party and just mingle real quick. Say, hi, how you doing? Nice to meet you. How do you know this person? Oh, great. Awesome. I just like to do that. But when you first get to the house, because no one knows anyone, but they all know the person that they came to see. You see that? So there should be this instant uh, bonding because we're all here for one purpose, one reason, to see my uh, to celebrate my friend who has a family, has three kids, has a family and full-time job and and juggling everything and then he accomplished something that a lot of people gave up a long time ago. He finished it. He did it. And we were all there to celebrate. And all of us, whenever you get to that, it's not just his house. Like I said, whenever you get to a certain certain point, whenever you get to someone's house, it's, there's this weird awkwardness. You know what it is when you look at someone. Hey, hey, until someone introduces, hey, this is Mike. He's a comedian. He's a good friend of us. Oh, hi. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Then the ice starts to melt. And then people start talking. Some people don't like crowds and don't and just tense up and freeze up. I get that too. I understand that. I'm with you on that. I, but you have to take a deep breath and you have, if someone's not going to break the ice for you, you have to do it. You're an adult. Okay. If you're a child, I get it. If you're in your teens, I get it. If you're a teenager, you don't want to talk to anyone. Your body's changing. You don't want, oh, 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 hi, nice to meet you. I get it. But if you're a grown adult, you have to. Even if it's awkward, you have to. It's someone's house. It's a party. You're there to get along with everyone. You just are. And I did. My family did. My 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 oldest, she was kind of nervous. My youngest was like a social butterfly. My wife had her friends and they were talking. And there was a lot of, lot, a lot of kids. Holy shit. There was a lot of kids. There was a lot of good kids and a lot of bad little shits. And no one was watching these bad little shits. I'm not talking about screaming or, or just being like a little kid that doesn't know any better. Bad little shits jumping on the fucking couches. Who the fuck allows their child to jump on a couch that's not even their home? I could see if it was your home. You can do whatever you want at your house. I'm not going to ever judge you. I will never visit your house again, but I'm not going to ever judge you. Okay? That is your home, your rules, your castle. I will always respect that. Whenever I go to someone's house, if they're being disrespectful to me and my family, I'm out. I'm not going to argue in someone house, someone else's house. I'm not. That's your home. That's the roof of your head. No matter how shitty of a person you are, I'm never going to disrespect your home. Ever. You come into my house, though. Excuse me. I had to raise my voice on that one. You come into my house, you're going to hear the truth. Don't step foot in my house if you're not ready to hear the truth. Okay? If we have unfinished business, we're going to finish it at my house. You're going to hear me speak my mind. So if you do me wrong, don't come over to my house because I'll tell you the truth. I'll tell you to go fuck yourself. I really will. I'll yell, scream, and then the last thing is go fuck yourself and then move on and shut the door. But then, you know, I wouldn't invite you over if you do me wrong. If you show up unexpectedly, yeah, whatever. I'm sidetracked. Anyways, let's get back to these shitty kids. These shitty kids, there's like five, six 
seven little kids, probably about seven, eight, a couple of teenagers, just jumping around the house, running amok. And there was one person who was stupid enough to raise their hand and say, oh, those are my grandchildren. These are my <laughs> grandkids. I don't know what to do. Ugh. Shut up, Grandma! See what I mean? And you're just like, what? You have to realize, when you have kids... Okay, there's a difference between hyper kids and rambunctious kids that just need to be outside and play. I get that. I understand that. I'm 100% with you. Okay? But when you're being rude... When you're being disrespectful, when you're jumping on couches and throwing shit around a nice house that is that is that's not even yours. You're not even related to that person. And you're jumping around the house. Who that's a bad reflection on the parents and the grandparents. I refuse to be that parent to go. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. Yes. Ground them. You can ground your child. When was the last time a parent has ever grounded a kid? Do you remember that growing up in my generation, Emma Mikers? Uh, by the way, my birthday is June 1st. It's coming soon. I'm going to be 38 years old. I can't wait. 38 and great. You know why? Because I, I'm not the guy type of guy that's going to be <laughs> getting gold. <laughs> when I'm 90, then I'll say that. Okay, but I'm 38. I'm going to be 38. I'm going to wear that with pride. But growing up, I know if I messed up, if I didn't clean the bathroom correctly, I would be grounded. Think about that right there. If I didn't clean the bathroom correctly, I would be grounded for a day on a Saturday. I would never jump on someone else's couch that I don't even know because I would not be standing here talking to you podcasting right now. My parents would probably go to jail because I they would murder me. They would have killed me. They would have been... Yeah, I'm, It's Tuesday. Long weekend. I can't speak. I'm sorry. I was drunk the whole weekend. No, I wasn't. I wasn't. But we left... And and I was like I said I we did it for my friend and we were there and those kids weren't our kids and he probably didn't even know who those kids were either. He was like, Who the fuck? Why are you here? <laughs> but he didn't care because he graduated and more power to him. And uh I thanked my kids. I truly thanked them. I'm like, God bless you. Thank you for being wonderful children. You mean a lot. So guess what you get to do tomorrow? What, Dad? Because they were tired. It was a long, you know, Friday, Saturday. They were driving. We were driving. And they were tired. I was like, you know what you can do on Sunday? What, Dad? You can sleep in. What? They slept in. We had a good time on Sunday. And then Monday, yesterday, Memorial Day. Check this out. On Memorial Day, I even allowed them to sleep in again. All right. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to force people to go to because there was a Memorial Day parade. And as a veteran, I'm obligated. I need to go. I, that's just one thing I have to do. And my wife and kids were like, I'm tired. I was like, whatever. You guys can sleep in. I'm not going to worry about it. I'll be back later. Uh, I went to the cemetery. I stood and uh, there was a uh, ceremonies. I stood there and, you know, we listen to music and there was a veterans day walk i didn't know about this there was a veterans walk uh 1.5 miles from one park to the other people were holding flags and marching and walking and one of my friends he introduced me to a couple uh whose both boys are in the marines and they're overseas right now and they haven't heard anything from them and you could just see in their eyes that they're 
stressed out and freaking out. And I get that. I understand that. And I, the, the thing I related to them was this. I said to them, I was like, try not to stress out. I know it's, it's hard to deal with this right now, but if you don't hear anything, that's a good, that's a good sign. That's good news. And I told them about my story when I was in the Navy and right after 9-11 happened, um, our ship was first ship to go overseas to Afghanistan, CVN-71 USS Theodore Roosevelt. Um, we were the first ship to go, and I told them, I told my mom I got to go. She's like, when are you going to come back? I said, I don't know. And I said that story to them. I said, don't worry, because if you worry now, it's going to stress you out. Just breathe and many blessings to you and your sons. And I got to know them a little bit more on this veterans walk. It was awesome. I was making jokes and we were laughing and we were having a good time. We were walking because we were doing it for the, a cause to walk for veterans, to walk for people that can't walk, to walk for people that gave their lives to this country, not to the government. Did you hear what I said? To this country to the citizens of this country. I still strongly er believe in that. I made a vow, and every everyone that signed up made a vow to protect the civilians first. Remember that. So when the rev revolution comes, I will be podcasting and fighting <laughs> for the civilians. <laughs> um, it's, you know, it's everyone, everyone gets upset and angry about Trump and about politics. Well, guess what? I'll break it down real simple for you. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Both sides are bullshit. Both sides. Left, right, Democrat, Republican. Both sides are bullshit. And they're playing us. There you go. There's the Wizard of Oz. There's, there's the man behind the curtain. Really? Both sides? Remember I told you a long time ago that I'm a political atheist? I don't believe in shit my government says. I've said that numerous times. And I still stand and believe in that. I don't believe in anything they say. Nothing. Because they're always arguing. They're arguing to keep us distracted. To keep us distracted because they're doing something else. Maybe they're sending aliens out here to invade us and eat our brains out. I don't know, but it doesn't, it does not, it would not surprise me. Nothing surprises me nowadays. So if I see an alien come from, you know, from the skies and they say, we are here to feed you. I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. It's about time. That sounds about right. We're food. We're food for the, for the reptilians. Not the reptilians. The reptilians summoned us to eat in trade for their eternal life. That sounds, I know that sounds awkward, but does it really surprise you? Would it surprise you? No, you'd be in terror, but you wouldn't be surprised, right? You wouldn't be surprised if that happened if we got invaded and aliens were talking to the reptilian pol politicians to uh, 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 use us as food in exchange for eternal life. Does that really seem so far-fetched? Really? Does it? Does it? It does, because the androids are going to turn us in. <laughs> Not the reptilians. The androids are going to turn us in to protect the reptilians so they can have eternal life from the aliens. There we go. Solved it. Solved it. Solved it. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. It doesn't matter, folks. It doesn't matter if we're going to be invaded by aliens. It really doesn't matter because you still need to have your kids be respectful. Okay? Let's keep that. Let's keep that 100. If you still, if you embed respect into your kids' brains and make sure they are respectful, maybe or maybe not, you may be saved or not. Either way, you're still going to go down in history as they ripped his body parts apart and they ate him up like it was nothing, but he was respectful. He was respectful. He said, yes, sir, no, sir, you can eat me for food as long as you protect my family. As long as my family's okay, I will sacrifice my body. And they probably eat everyone else, but they would know that person was respectful. And that's the moral of the story. Respect, okay? 
put some respect on it. You have to. You have to be respectful. In martial arts, people are respectful. They bow. They say thank you. They say hello. They, you know, everywhere you go, we need to bring bring back respect. And you know what's making people lose respect is putting their eyes on the screens on the cell phones. I'm bad at it too. Okay, I'm horrible at it. Okay, sometimes I go on on. I look at my. I actually have a meter on my phone now that says uh, how long I've been on screen time. I'm like, ugh, it's been quite some time. So I'm going to delete that app, except for YouTube. I love YouTube. Sorry, didn't mean to raise my voice on that. I love YouTube. If I can't pay for an event, like a boxing event or MMA event, I'm not paying $65 for one night. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to watch the highlights on YouTube because it immediately happens in seconds now. Thank God for YouTube. <laughs> okay, just like uh, the new wrestling federation AEW, uh, they had their pay per view this past weekend. I heard it was a success. I just watched the highlights on YouTube, and now it could be part of the conversation. And it, it was a great pay per view event. I'm very thankful that there's life outside of WWE. Thank you, AEW. I appreciate it, and I'm sure fans of wrestling. Not just fans of WWE, fans of wrestling appreciates it. It's a breath of fresh air. Thank you. And thank you, YouTube. <laughs> I, I'm not paying 65 bucks for one night. I'm not. That's just ridiculous. Okay? Even for WrestleMania, I'm not going to pay for it. It's one night. If it was a two-night event, sure, maybe. Or if I'm going to pay 65 bucks, I'm going to go there live. Whether where, whatever event it is, I'm gonna go there live. I'm not paying sixty five bucks for the comfort of my home. I'll pay twenty. Sure, I'll pay twenty bucks for a pay per view one night event because I'm in the comfort of my home and I can pause it and do whatever. You can't even pause it because it's live events. So what's the point? If you sixty five bucks is a waste of money, and I'm sure that one kid in that third world country is like, what is what is pay per view event? What is that? You spoil the Americans. You have, you have, you have podcast. You have, you have AEW pay per view event. You have boxing event. You have, you have kids that are jumping on couches. What? Oh my God. Oh my God. I just realized that. Oh my God, if you took a kid or if you adopted a kid, I don't want to say take because that sounds like trafficking and this is, we don't support that here at me, Mike, self, and I. If you adopted a kid that was from a third world country, brought him to America and took him to a party where there's these kids that are just acting crazy, he would be shocked. <gasps> what are you jumping on? That's a couch. What is a couch? Oh, he's so fluffy. I love America. I love it. And then he jumps on the couch and becomes spoiled, rich, and rotten. Hey, more power to him. <laughs> All righty, folks. I'm going to get out of here. I think we had a good time. What do you think? I think so. I really enjoy talking to you. I know uh, a lot of podcasts say, thank you for being a really appreciate. No, but I really do. 71 episodes is I like it. I've I've done my YouTube videos, I've done Facebook blogs, I've done this and that, but I haven't been committed as I am with podcasting because you mean a lot. 71, 71st episode. Thank you so much. Anyways, okay. Enough with that. I uh, want to let you know that this podcast is sponsored by Waza Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. You mentioned the me mics Mike Self and I podcast at Waza Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you will get half off the first month of training. That's half off to choke someone else. So if your kid is being disrespectful and you want to see him get he, see her or him get choked out, well, take him to the <laughs> take him to Waza Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Mention my podcast and you can watch your kid get choked out for half off. And you'll be like, "That's what you get for being rotten." Do you still like Jiu Jitsu? Hey, well, I don't know. And then they'll. Once they become better at jujitsu, then they'll learn, and then they'll become respectful. Either you become respectful or you get choked out. What's it going to be? <laughs> okay, and all right, don't forget, here we go. 
me Here we go. Are you ready? 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 It's me and Mike Selfinda. One. Salsa! 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 Hey! Hey!